Hello? Did you say something? Can you speak a little louder? Are you saying you're thirsty? Is this the sound of trees talking to each other? Probably not. But you've probably heard something somewhere about the fact that trees can communicate. And you've probably also heard that global warming is messing everything up. So that got me wondering, what are trees saying to each other about climate change? Trees play a major role in how carbon moves around planet Earth. You knew this was going to start with photosynthesis, right? The leaves from growing trees pull in CO2 from the atmosphere, the same CO2 we breathe out, and yes, the same CO2 released from burning fossil fuels. Add light and water, and then leaves turn this three-ingredient recipe into sugars used by the trees to grow. The waste product of this chemical reaction, oxygen, is re-released back to the atmosphere. Carbon remains locked inside the tree. Actually, scratch that. Carbon is the tree. The trunk, branches, leaves, and roots are all made up of tiny blocks of carbon. So when you look up at a giant Douglas fir, you are looking at a tower of carbon. CO2 is what gives it mass. How is your mind not blown yet? When a tree dies, it feeds most of that carbon back into the soil as it decomposes, which helps other trees. So for millions of years, trees have been doing a great job of pulling out excess CO2 in our atmosphere. Where the trouble began is when humans started producing too much carbon for the trees to take in. Add to that, a warming climate means more intense wildfires, droughts, pests, basically things that can kill trees. What are they saying to each other about this? So we met up with world-renowned Canadian tree scientist, Suzanne Samard. She has spent decades revolutionizing the way we understand how trees talk to each other. And I have been so excited to get to talk to her. First of all, welcome to my favorite forest. Well, thanks. This is beautiful. It's, it's a good one, right? Yeah. <laughs> how are trees talking to each other? Can you show us? Yeah, so they talk to each other through their root systems. Um, and these trees, they form a relationship with a fungus called a mycorrhiza fungus. So mycorrhiza literally means fungus root. And these fungi, which colonize the roots of the trees, which we can look at, actually will connect the trees together. So you can see there's a root coming off of this tree here. Um, and it will go quite far. Like, um, so you can kind of see the angle and that's how you know. It's coming yeah, it's going to come out this way. And then it... You know, it, it explores the soil in this very networked kind of pattern. And these roots can actually go, you know, as far as the tree is tall. So they're huge. But they fan out into these very fine root tips. And those root tips then become colonized by these mycorrhizal fungi. Um, so we can look. Okay. There's some, there's some roots right there. These are the fine roots. Oh, yeah. And they end in these little uh, root tips. And these root tips are where the fungus uh, colonizes and, and, and infects the root. It's like an, it is an infection, um, but, but it's a good infection. Right. <laughs> In that the, the fungus will get the photosynthate from the tree um, and, it, and it gets transmitted into these root tips and then that gets transmitted into the fungus itself. And the fungus returns for it um, nutrients and water that it pulls up from the soil. I see. So the tree is basically sending information to the fungus at the end of the roots, telling it what it what it needs, yes. what it's lacking, and then the fungi helps bring out that moisture in places that the roots couldn't reach. So trees are talking to each other through mushrooms. Basically, yeah. <laughs> are your hands ever not dirty? No, my hands are always dirty. <laughs> and I've I've heard you describe it down here as sort of the internet. Yeah, which, it's like the internet. That's yeah. a really good way to think about it. Let's go down the rabbit hole. Trees are talking to each other below ground and through mushrooms. But get this, trees are also sending out electrical signals through leaves. And one biologist and musician found an artful way to listen in on that conversation. I'm obsessed. Uh, 
As modern biology, I'm fascinated with the sound of the present moment. I'm really interested in listening to elements of the environment, everything from changes in electromagnetic radiation to sunlight to wind to plant and fungal bioelectric changes. I feel like this moment is so alive and sometimes we don't realize it, we sort of forget. Essentially, when I'm working with plant or fungal bioelectricity, what I'm doing is using devices to run a very small current through whatever organism it is. And as the impedance changes over time, which is kind of a surrogate for bioelectrical changes, so signaling changes within the organism, no changes on a synthesizer change. And we can listen to those note changes as music. What we're listening to is not just random reactive cellular processes. It's actually the nervous system of a plant or a fungi. Plants, including trees, have phytonervous systems. So they don't have the same elements necessarily as a human nervous system, but they're using the language of electricity and action potentials to signal behavioral changes. I find what emerges is a real collaboration between natural bioelectricity or wind or you know waves or um, sunlight and myself. If we think about all of the problems that Mother Nature is facing right now, it can become overwhelming. But in the present moment, we always have a choice. And in the present moment, there's power. In the present moment, there's also hope, which is really, really important um, when you're trying to make a change. Suzanne, you have you know, grown up in the forests of BC. You started your career in the logging industry, decades of forest research. But what was your first clue that the trees were talking to each other? Yeah, I was really worried in the 1980s about how we were trying to get rid of our native plants. Yeah. So to grow faster conifers. In fact, we were spraying them with herbicides. And so I wanted to understand the role of those plants because I was worried that we were throwing away important parts of the ecosystem. And so birch was one of the ones that I was worried about. And so I started growing Douglas fir with paper birch and by itself. And when I grew Douglas fir with paper birch in the forest and I pulled up the roots, they were covered in an amazing array of mycorrhizal fungi. Um, many species and it turns out that a lot of those species link together directly with the birch tree so the birch and the fir were actually connected but when i grew douglas fir by itself without its lovely birch neighbors yeah. its roots were had very little fungi on them and so what was happening is that the birch was connecting with the fir and transmitting some of its sugars to the douglas fir and um, which was super interesting because you know we were getting rid of birch because it shaded the douglas fir and i found it that the more paper birch shaded douglas fir the more sugars it sent to douglas fir which was completely the opposite of what we were thinking right we were thinking that birch was competing mm -hmm. for sunlight with doug fir but it was actually sharing its riches, its carbohydrates, its sugars with the fur. So that was one of your light bulb moments. That was a big light bulb moment for me. Yeah, I thought, you know, we're, we've got this all wrong. We, here we are, we're, we're trying to basically reduce this ecosystem to just tree, to conifers, so that we can make more money from them. And we didn't understand that all these plants, including paper birch, were essential in bringing that forest up in the growth and diversity of that forest. Hold that thought. That was the light bulb moment for Suzanne when she realized that trees are talking to each other. For Indigenous knowledge keepers, this idea of everything being connected is how they've understood the natural world for thousands of years. The trees in the forest, when they're connected below ground, uh, Subie, Bruce Miller, the late Bruce Miller, used to talk about how this would teach us about our own communities and that we could emulate what the trees teach us. Can you talk a little bit more about how knowing that everything is connected is, is directly tied to being caretakers? The reason that children are taught at an early age about these connections and the stories and of course good behavior and making sure that these connections remain intact to protect the cycles of life. For example, when we have the 
habitat that salmon need by making sure that things are connected in the forest, making sure that the, the hydrology is flowing the way that it should. Forests were managed to maintain supplies of large trees. And there were actually these scenarios in some areas where trees were harvested for planks of wood, but the tree was left standing and left alive. And so that later uh, more planks could be harvested. There were also trees that were completely cut down, used as house posts for frames. And, and of course, there were trees cut down for planks as well. But maintaining the large trees for canoe building and totem pole was a significant interest in protecting areas of the forest. And I think it's helpful if we start thinking about ourselves as a part of the forest. That's the way Indigenous people view the forest in, in many ways. We are a part of this system. And when we take ownership in that sense, instead of the material ownership, then we are more inclined to provide the stewardship that's necessary and, and maintaining those connections of things in these environments so that they can continue to thrive.